Hello, and welcome to Keeping It Young podcast, conversations about marriage, family, and ministry life. I am Glory, and here is my Uncle Dave and Aunt Bethley. Hey, everybody. Welcome to our program today, and we hope you're off and running to a good day and a good week. And, <laughs> yes, and I feel like we're off and running today. That's kind of our life lately. It it's is. off and running. Yes. With and, David's schedule, we have to make sure that we have time to record the episodes. And so we look ahead on the calendar and we're like, oh, how many do we need to get recorded before you take off Absolutely. for the summer season? And our summer season has been very full as far as uh, we've done several conferences, revivals, and we've also have six straight camp weeks. Yay! And with a few other services mingled in there as well. So it's busy, busy days, but really good days. Yes. And Beth and I certainly um, uh, are always happy to hear from you. I know that a lot of what we've been teaching lately about raising our boys to be men has garnered a lot of response. Yes. And a lot of attention, a lot of comments. And uh, just so you know, we're always happy to hear those. Right. And I would say that uh, by and large, at least what I've heard, the comments have been very encouraging. Like we have been affirming to parents about, yes, we do need to be on this in this culture, teaching our boys to be men. That's true. It has been very affirming. And yet at the same time, there may be questions. We We always welcome those. And just to let you know, because we are operating on so many different fronts as far as we get messages from... Facebook, from Twitter, from uh, key, you know, from uh, Instagram, right. as well as from our different po- you know websites as well. Yes. Uh, if for some reason you message us and you're looking for an answer and you don't get one, please feel free to resend that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, or just say, hey, did you get my message? Yeah, because uh, as well, many times our stuff that goes into a spam folder is automatically deleted because mm. we get we get somewhere uh, into the two or three thousand messages a week that are spam. Mm-hmm. And so if we do overlook yours, it may have inadvertently gone to spam. So please feel free to send it again if you ask us a question and you don't get an answer. Yes. And uh, of course, you can go to the Keeping It Young podcast. Every one of our episodes are available on the podcast website. Right. And sometimes some of you message us from, say, you know, you listen on Spotify or on Apple or one of the others, and you're looking for a certain one. You go back so far and and you're not finding anything from the very beginning. Right. And apparently that's because some of the podcast sites only make available a select number of them. And once we, Mm -hmm. you know, get a new one added, then they take off the one back at the front. Right. So they would only have the most recent within this, the most recent months. And there's nothing we can do about that. So you can find all of our episodes at the Keeping It Young podcast site. Yes. And, And we are trying real hard to make sure those are easy to understand. So if you're looking for a particular subject, hopefully you can find it. If not, reach out to us. Chances are we can point you to one. Yes. And we'd be glad to do that. Of course, you can keep up with our ministry itself at the evangelistdaveyoung.com site. Mm-hmm. And uh, let us know if we can serve you in some way there as well. And if we see you this summer at camp, make sure you come and say hi. Absolutely. We'll be at several Bible camps and Christian camps, mostly teen camp, but one family camp. So Absolutely. exciting Absolutely. So we'd days. love to see all of you. And the fall is coming fast as well. It's hard to believe, but we're always looking ahead. And uh, we'll be all over the place in the fall, so hopefully we can see many of you this fall as well. Let's just pause for a moment and remind our listening audience of our sponsors. Okay. And uh, I want to remind you again of the churchcrew.com. Yes. If you have not visited the website, you should, especially if you have any way, shape, or form that you are leading volunteers in the local church. Yes. And what a great program. Take advantage. They have been so kind to our ministry. And uh, we really appreciate all of you that have encouraged them, have have at least checked it out, looked it over. And many of you are using the program now. We're very thankful for that. Wonderful. We have just been right here, right smack dab in the middle of this series. We started just kind of almost as we're going to just comment on a few things. And then it's turned into a (laughs) full blown, uh, you know, docuseries almost. Yes. Let's spend six months on this. And, uh, but we've just, just, the more we've gotten into it, training our boys to be men has been a huge study. Yes. And we've really enjoyed the study. It's reminded us of things in our own family, and it just has really drawn our attention towards the errors and the lies of the culture. Yes. And that is, that's probably been the biggest thing that we've gotten into in this study. We know what the Bible says, mm-hmm. and traditionally we know what has worked. Right. And has actually worked for 5,000 years of human history. <laughs> and all of a sudden we're living in a culture where all of that is questioned, undermined, mm-hmm. attacked, ridiculed, mocked. And uh, the list just goes on in all the negative terms. Right. And uh, so we've just kind of wrapped up the uh, training our boys to be men, and we're ready to transition into the training our girls to be ladies. Yes. And as we get started, uh, just maybe a transitional episode or two here to help us get focused. Right. Just to maybe lay some foundation of why this is so important with both genders, but 
um, really cueing us into the um, f- being a feminine, um, biblically feminine, being a biblical woman of God. So mm-hmm. that's where we're headed in the next few episodes, maybe just one, but yeah. And, 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 and our habit <laughs> we'll has see. been to, okay, we're going to have to add another one. Yes. <laughs> but one of the things that's very obvious is that children can see that boys and girls are different. Yes. That's just very obvious. And I would add to that, so can parents. Mm-hmm. Government, uh, sometimes, you know, politics and all of the philosophies of our day argue that boys and girls are not different. Mm -hmm. But if you're a child, you know that. And if you're a parent, you know, wait a minute, boys and girls are different. Yes. And the reason all of this is such an issue today, in the 1970s, a rather small group of feminists began insisting that the sexes were identical, except for their, in the words of this author, their reproductive apparatus. Mm. And that any uniqueness in temperament or behavior resulted from patriarchal cultural biases. Mm. Now, that, that's, that's kind of a mouthful. But yes. it really is interesting that this, this, this issue that we're discussing, all of the strange oddness to it, mm. really is very recent. It started in the 1970s when we were just little children. Right. And, and it didn't work the way they assumed. Mm. Um, although they are refusing to back down, we're, we're 50 years later. Mm-hmm. Now we use puberty blockers to prevent the natural development of masculinity and femininity. Mm-hmm. Uh, you have two options here. As Christians, our position is that in doing so, they're destroying God's creation. Mm. And yet for those who are not Christians, but who are evolutionists, the evidence is that they are destroying millions of years of the evolutionary process. Mm. So they're interrupting. So for the we, we don't embrace the evolutionary view. No. But as believers, as Christians, we are very aware of the fact that this whole battle has to do with destroying God's created order. Right. That God created males uniquely, females uniquely. They are equal mm-hmm. and yet unique. Yes. And so the whole culture we're living in is actually a spiritual battle. Yes. And isn't it interesting that in this author who stated um, these things about, oh, this is all just about a patriarchal society who has trained boys to be boys and girls to be girls, and we need to overcome that, they are saying, saying that this is all in the training, whereas really it was very organic. Um mm-hmm. In the way that you were stating that little girls and little boys know that there is a difference between them and that they just grew up knowing girls are going to do this and boys are going to do that, not in a cookie cutter kind of way. And we're going to talk about that, but it, it just was kind of assumed and yes, trained a little bit. But isn't it ironic that this agenda that our culture may have has actually gone beyond we have to train it. They even have to step in medically to make it happen. And so I just, I find that yeah. such so a now, contradictory thing. So now we don't train it, we change it. Yes. And we do it medically and hormonally and and so forth. It's and just such a strange. a lot of cultural training. Absolutely. Yes. Feminism was a radical concept that lacked scientific support, except support which was flawed and especially politically motivated. Mm. So there was no science involved in it. It was all social. Right. And uh, males and females were considered redundant and that parents had been wrong for at least 5,000 years. Hmm. So what happened in the 1970s is the media ran with this notion and brought in a very, a word they popularized, the word unisex. Yes. And it found its way into the language of the enlightened and eventually into the language of just everybody else. Hmm. If you challenged the notion, you were labeled a sexist Hmm. and you were attacked. Yes. And uh, men who really saw that were men like James Dobson. Yes. James Dobson, who dared to confront this error in sociological thinking and ideological thinking, right. was attacked viciously mm-hmm. and slandered. And just the list went on and on and on. Right. And there were interesting people on the side of the feminists. Uh, and their step was to redesign the way children were being raised. And uh, for the last 50 years, that's been the goal of this whole movement. Right. Right. Let's change parenting. Yeah. And here's yes. a name most of us would be familiar with. Some of these names you wouldn't be, but Phil Donahue is a name. Oh, well, I would say, knows. well, I don't know. If you're like 40 and above, maybe 50 and above, you've heard of Phil Donahue. Okay, so that's All fair. of our younger audience is like, oh, I'm going to have to Google this name. <laughs> <laughs> well, he told parents, he was a very popular man in he our was youth. A talk show talk host. Talk show host. He mm-hmm. told parents that their daughters were victims of terrible sexist bias. Mm. And he taught things that said that sons should be raised more like girls. 
Uh, in fact, his girlfriend was a feminist who wrote a best-selling book called Free to Be You and Me. Hmm. And the publishers called it the first real guide to non-sexist child rearing. Hmm. So what they said was, if you are raising a child traditionally, right. boys to be boys, girls to be girls, boys to be men, mm-hmm. girls to be ladies, you are absolutely an error. You are a sexist. Hmm. And it just was really interesting. It featured, the book featured dozens of stories and poems. And primarily the goal of the book was to show that role reversal is a positive thing. Hmm. It taught boys to play with dolls and tea sets and told them they could be anything they wanted to be. Now get ready for this. They could be anything they wanted to be, including grandmas and mommies. Mm, except for that reproductive apparatus. Right. And, and it's so interesting that, you know, this was kind of laughed at when we were kids. Mm. Everybody was like, can you believe there are people who think boys can be grandmas and mommies? Yes. And here we are living in a generation where almost every week on the news, maybe every day, mm-hmm. this very issue comes up. Boys can be mommies. Men can be mommies. Men mm. can have babies. It's just this, it's amazing how this is all coming to fruition 50 mm. years later. Yes. The norm of the book was about uh, women. Uh, this was the illustrations they gave. The norm of the illustration was about wim- women nailing shingles on the rooftops and working concrete on the ground while daddies, fathers, made breakfast and supper in the kitchen. Mm-hmm. Every effort was made to teach children that fathers make great moms and mothers were tough dudes. And what's interesting is they didn't teach that mothers were great dads. Hmm. They taught that mothers were great dudes. They were great men, Hmm. not dads. Fathers were great moms, but mothers were great men. Right. And uh, it was interesting in that. And and here's a couple of other names. That was Phil Donahue. Well, it, it, let's just discuss this just for a minute, because okay. I also find this ironic and contradictory that they are so bothered by a social construct that what they would call a social construct yes. of traditional parenting where you buy your boy a truck for Christmas and your girl a doll for Christmas. They would be so bothered by that Absolutely. that we have to then come up with a whole new social construct of girls can be nailing shingles to the roof and working concrete, which I I find that just kind of... Um, so uh, mind blowing because it is true that a woman who is faced with a situation that she needs to do something is going to figure it out and do it, whether she needs to put a roof on her house or yes. do concrete in the driveway. You know, it, there are things that happen even when you're out of town that I just need to figure out and I need to get a hammer yeah, or a screwdriver point. and just figure it out. So their whole point is, oh, well, we just need to mix it all up when women have been doing this for hundreds of years. <laughs> <laughs> right. And the point was that people rose to the occasion. Oh, yes. So that if a man had children and his wife passed away, then of course he's going to be making meals in the kitchen. Absolutely. And nobody batted an eye about that. And he was honored for taking care of this particular need in his family. Yes. And if the roof needed to be put on the house and the wife had to get up there and nail the shingles, nobody batted an eye about that. Right. And and you hear stories like from the World Wars where many hundreds and thousands of our men went off to war. And so what did the ladies do? They took up working in the fields and they went to the factories and they built the ships and they built the airplanes. And then when the men all came back, they were like, oh, okay, thank you. Here's your job back. And then some of them were like, you know what? I really like this. I like this factory job. I'm going to keep it. And so they did. So when you talk from the feminist standpoint of, well, traditionalism is just a social construct, then I would argue that their view is more of a social construct, that they are pinning um, ladies down that they have to do a certain thing and they're pinning men down that they have to do a certain thing whereas in Christianity we are not cookie cutter and the Lord knows that we can rise to the occasion we can take on quote girl jobs or quote boy jobs absolutely and the point here being is that in our culture every one of you who are listening who are raising children you will have to adopt one or the other social constructs. Mm. You either have to say, you know what? We think feminism is right. 5,000 years of parenting was wrong. Mm -hmm. And parents have failed. We have failed. And so we have to go with the new construct that men can be women and women can be men. And there are no differences between the two except for the fact that social constructs were wrong for all those years. Right. Or we have to go with the biblical view, the biblical worldview that says, wait a minute, there's a God who made men and women equal and yet unique. 
Yes. Equal and yet with unique responsibilities, equal yet with unique roles in family, in marriage, in home, in society. Mm-hmm. And so it really is your embracement. You have to go with one or the other, yes, right? Yes, absolutely. Is, is embracement even a word that I... I, I, I think I, I just think made it that works. Up. It works. Yeah, I just so think I we'll go with up. it. <laughs> so, so Phil Donahue's a, a man we found and did a little study on. And here's a few others. Jermaine Greer wrote a book called The Female Eunuch. Hmm. And she was very influential in what she wrote. And here's her view was this. Society had, forgive this word, society had castrated women. And the answer was for mothers to be less nurturing of daughters, lest they were taught to be more dependent and feminine. She popularized the notion that children are better off when raised by, listen to this now, institutions rather than by parents. Mm. The book she wrote reached the bestseller lists when we were children. Hmm. And and the inter- interesting thing is that when uh, Hillary Clinton, for instance, said it takes a village to raise a child, everybody thought, oh, she's come up with a new phrase. Mm-mm. was not oh, at no, all. No, no, no. She was quoting the training she received in the higher educational you know, institution she attended mm-hmm. that said parents do not know how to raise children. Right. And in fact, parents are not good at raising children because all they do is teach them the traditional norms we have, we who are enlightened have to take the institution and train children. The goal of feminism is for the institution to train the child. Otherwise the child will turn out in the traditional norm. Yes. And it's just, just such, a, such a strange thing. Mm. Uh, so there was Phil Donahue, there was Jermaine Greer and uh, Gloria Steinem, I think yes. is one that's more popular. Everybody, Many people would have heard right. of her or at least read about her. And she was famous for what? And the National Organization for Women. And she edited Ms. Magazine. She was probably the most influential of all the feminists who laid the foundation for the whirlwind we are now reaping. Mm-hmm. And uh, let me uh, let me read a quote from her best-selling book. Uh, this is an older book, but here, here's a quote from it. She says, we've had a lot of people in this country who have had the courage to raise their daughters more like sons. Which is great, she says, because it means they're more equal. And then she adds this, but there are many fewer people who have had the courage to raise their sons like daughters. And that's what needs to be done. Hmm. This is very interesting because what seems to be like, oh, where did this come from? Actually was a on purpose last 50 year movement from the feminists. Oh, yes. And, And she goes on to say, we need to stop raising boys to think that they need to prove their masculinity. Hmm. And then she adds an explanation of that by, she says, being controlling or by not showing emotions or by not being little girls. What's interesting is that she puts one in the middle that everybody would agree on. It's true that men can show emotion. Mm -hmm. And the idea that, well, you're not a man if you show emotion is an error. But she puts that in between masculinity means men are controlling of women and masculinity means that men are uh, not being little girls or not willing to be little girls. Mm-hmm. And it's just such a, such a twisted view in how we've been trained to think as Christians. You can ask boys, she said, what if you were a little girl? They get very upset at the idea. And here's why she says they get upset because they think that's an inferior thing. Hmm. Isn't that interesting? And she goes on to say, they've already got this idea that in order to be boys, they have to be superior to girls. Mm. And that's the problem. Marriage, she goes on to say, is not an equal partnership. I mean, you lose your name, your credit rating, your legal residence, and socially you're treated as if his identity were yours. I cannot imagine being married. If everybody has to get married, then clearly it's a prison and not a choice. And as an aside, what's kind of interesting there is that she did get married in 2000. <laughs> and, and she closes it out in this quote by saying, all women are... Uh, all women are supposed to want children, but I could never draw up any feelings of regret about that. Mm. In other words, she believed very strongly, very strongly that it is an error um, if boys or if if boys don't want to be girls, that that's an error. Yes. And so this was this goes back to the feminism of the 1970s and 80s, and we really are reaping that whirlwind. So that was, uh, who well, was that again? Gloria that was Steinem. Gloria Steinem. And, and let me just stop right here and say, if any of that sounded like, well, that, that sounds fine. I mean, why should a man be controlling of a woman? Or why should a man feel like he's superior? Then, then friend, let me tell you, first of all, you don't know a biblical view of masculinity and femininity, because in the Bible, men and 
women are absolutely equal in the sight of God. We are loved the same. We are saved the same. We grow in Christ the same. And so there is, for her to say, oh my goodness, socially speaking, men are so much superior. Well, then that was some type of error socially where she had come from. I don't know what was in her past, but I do know that in Christ, men and women are equal. And also that leadership in the home, um, male leadership in the home where the husband is the head of the wife that has nothing to do with the superiority or even controlling. Or it, inferiority. Or inferiority. It has has everything to do with God's design for the home to make sure that the home runs smoothly and lovingly and affectionately. And if the husband and the wife are doing what they're supposed to do in their walk with God, it is a beautiful thing. So make sure that when you hear things like that in our culture, whether you're seeing it on Instagram or you hear us just talk about that and you're thinking to yourself, well, what's wrong with that? Then keep listening because we're going to be giving you a biblical view. Absolutely. And, And one of the things you're finding about these feminists is that they absolutely believe that masculinity equaled error. Yes. In fact, they believed in the early days that femininity equaled superiority. Mm. So the very thing that they are claiming they were against, they're now doing the other direction. Right. And then fast forward to where we are now, and now we believe that the only way for there to be equality is for there to be neither masculinity nor femininity. (laughs) Yes. And yet in the midst of all that, what do girls do who don't want to be feminine? They become masculine. Mm. and boys who don't want to be masculine become feminine. So no matter how hard we've tried, we still are dealing in the realm of masculinity and femininity. Yes. And you have to determine which worldview is accurate, which one has held together society for 5,000 years, Mm. and which one is destroying society as we know it. Yes. And so these are huge things. What was interesting about the feminists is that most of them were never married and didn't like children and deeply resented men. But it advised an entire generation on how to raise boys and girls. Oh, right. Isn't that strange? And isn't that just how it goes? People who don't have children know best how Absolutely. to raise children. <laughs> and, and that's just such a strange thing. But there's one more area to mention. And, and this is that the feminists especially went after toys and toy makers when mm, we were kids. Yes. Germaine Greer is another name who wrote a best-selling book. In, in that generation. And she right. says, and we have mentioned, we mentioned her just a little yeah. earlier. And she said, uh, so where does the difference between the sexes come from? It is bred into us by people like toy makers who steer boys toward trucks and girls toward dolls. And she says by teachers, parents, and employers, all the wicked influences of a sexist society. Mm-hmm. So think about what she just said. The wicked influences of a sexist society are toy makers, teachers, parents, and employers. Mm-hmm. And she said, this is a social problem that needs to be fixed. So great pressure was exerted on our generation over the last 50 years to fix this problem. Right. And the problem was that boys are masculine and girls are feminine. Mm. And it was just such a such a strange view when you look at it in that light. And, and all of that to say, Bethany, I want you to know, as we start stepping into training our girls to be ladies, mm-hmm. we've just finished the idea that Christianity trains boys to be masculine, to be men. Yes. We just want you to know that all the issues that's happening in our society right now, you, you uh, if you're a young lady and you're listening to us and you've really struggled with this idea of feminism, that, well, this sounds right, this sounds really good, mm-hmm. you need to go back and study where did it come from? Yes. What were the what were the plans? What mm-hmm. what's what's happening in this feministic idea that females have been uh, mistreated through the last five thousand years, and therefore what we've got to do is turn females into men, mm-hmm. uh, people you know where there's an equality, we can do all the same things, live all the same ways. There's no roles, there's no responsibilities, and and many of the things we're hating about this society is directly resulted in that. Yes, uh, we are really you know, reaping the whirlwind of absentee fathers. Mm -hmm. But once fathers were ridiculed and once an entire generation was trained that fatherhood is negative. Right. uh, It wasn't that women rose to the occasion and replaced fatherhood. Mm -hmm. It was that fatherhood ceased to exist. Mm -hmm. And in many, many young people alive today, dad is absent, silent. They don't even know him. Right. And so we really are reaping a whirlwind in all of this. We are with the um, ideologies that we've just discussed and how people have 
you know, taken even just a few things that they've heard from that and said, yes, yes, I agree with that. Women need to feel like they are superior, or even I have heard even in the Christian realm, um, women need to have a place at the table. And, you know, when I, when I look in the word of God, women have always had a place at the table when it comes to the Lord Jesus, when it comes to his use of them in the scripture, his love for them in the scripture, his elevation of them in the scripture. And so for a Christian woman to be adopting these anti-biblical philosophies is alarming, really, in light of the Word of God. And really, if, if you have, just take a moment, take a step back and look at how women are treated in the Word of God. And um, you may find some instances where you're just like, well, she wasn't treated all that well, and maybe it was something to do with that culture. And maybe a lot of these feminist ideas have come because there was sin in the culture or maybe sin in their home, and they weren't given a biblical view in order to overcome that. And so then Satan took it and they were allowed to run with it. Um, but don't, don't adopt these um, ideologies. Look in the Word of God and understand that the Lord loves you. And when we talk about women becoming feminine and becoming a lady of God, don't sit back and roll your eyes and say, doesn't that sound just like the church? Because the church is if it's following God, does have a right view of womanhood. So, and then I'm also looking at all of this research that my husband has done and put in our notes, and I'm like, wow, we have quite quite the battle that we are fighting in our society, and we are reaping a lot of what sounded like, oh, that sounds fine back in the 70s, and now, as young parents, many of you know, there's a lot going on in our culture that is just, to use the word again, and alarming. Absolutely. And so we do need to be on guard. And hopefully in these next few episodes that we do about training our our young girls to become ladies of God, that it will give you encouragement and not a spirit of fear and not a spirit of anger either at our culture. We certainly don't want to sow that. So hopefully we can overcome some of these ideologies in the next few episodes by speaking truth from the Word of God. Absolutely. So we want you to know as we close today that we do believe that masculinity and femininity are biblical, they are of God, and they are right, and they are best for society as a whole. Yes. And we also believe that the errors of our generation will damage you and damage your marriage and damage your children and damage society as a whole. Yes. And what we're going to do over coming weeks here is lay out for you a biblical worldview, Mm -hmm. but we're also going to be practical and just give you practical ways that you can train your girls, your daughters Mm -hmm. to be ladies. Yes. And so we hope you'll stay with us. And if you have questions or comments, we would love to hear from you. And if we can uh, even point you to even different areas of research, we'd be happy to try to do that as well. Yes. All right. We're out of time. Any last thought before we shut off today? No, I'm looking forward to the next few weeks. It should be good. as well. It's going to be a great talk, and we're looking forward to you joining us for these conversations. In the meantime, have a great week ahead, and remember to serve the Lord with gladness. The Keeping It Young podcast is a Bax 5 Media production.